Hi, we're team number 14. This is Cesar, this is Pablo, and myself, Alexis. We're presenting the topic of SKF bolt bearing selection procedure as project number one for our mechanical design class. I'm going to present a brief introduction of the bearings. Uh, bearings are mechanical devices that are used in a very wide diversity of machinery in which elements such as shafts undergo rotational motion. The functionality of the bearings consists of in allowing two or more different parts to perform a restricted motion between them. There is a big variety of bearings in the market in which included ball bearings uh, and roller bearings. Each one of these types is able to take a radial loads, stroke loads, or a combination of both. Now we can see here some pictures of examples of bearings. In this case we have roller bearings uh, and its elements are cylindrical. And here we can see the ball bearings. The ball bearings have a spherical elements, in, elements inside of them. Uh, here we have a crowd uh, picture of the ball bearing and its configuration. Uh, here we can see some of the principal uh, parameters of a bearing which are included in the tables of the catalog catalogs in order to select one of them. For example, the bore, the outside di diameter and the width. Now I'm going to talk about SKF. The SKF group is a very big and important company represented in a large amount of the countries around the world. This company supplies a large diversity of products and services directed to the mechanical engineering fields. They provide a diverse selection of bearings for many different uses. Here we can see the different SKF ball bearing types. The deep group ball bearings, uh, they are using a wide variety of applications. Angular contact ball bearings, uh, these accommodate uh, combined loads. Angular contact, contact uh, troughs of ball bearings, they are used to support rotary tables or drilling rigs, white bearings, uh, self-aligning ball bearings, truss bearings, and track running bearings. In this picture we can see the different uh, schematics of the uh, different type of ball bearings. Uh, in the, uh, for example, the deep groove ball bearing, the angular contact ball bearing, the self-aligning ball bearing, the truss ball bearing. We can see here, this is the preliminary information for the design. First, we got to select a suitable bearing type and size. Also, we have to select a suitable form and design of the other components of the arrangement. Uh, we got to know a appropriate fits and bearings, uh, internal clearance of the, our preloads, holding devices, adequate seals, the type and quantity of lubricant, and the installation and removal methods. All these mentioned parameters uh, uh, depend on the requirements of the, of the design that we're going to be doing. And also we got to understand that each individual decision affects the performance, reliability, and economy of the bearing arrangement. Next, I'm sorry. Next, here we can see a chart. This chart shows all the factors that need to be considered at the moment of selecting a bearing type. As we can see here, these are the selection factors, uh, which we have, uh, for example, how easy the bearing type is going to be for the designers, uh, the low initial cost, for example, the toleration to dirt, uh, this, uh, how simple is going to be the lubrication system. So, based on these factors, we're going to be able to select which bearing type we're going to use. In this example, we can see that the deep group ball bearing has a better uh, and much simpler lubrication system than any of the thrust bearings, for example. Here, for a selection procedure, uh, we have two very important formulas. This one selects the rating load at a 90% uh, reliability. This one over here selects the rating load uh, at a more than a 90% reliability. The rating load, it's the load that we want to calculate in order to go to the tables and find this uh, appropriate type of bearing that we want to select. Uh, the rating life and the speed are parameters given by the manufacturer. The desired life and the speed is, uh, are the parameters, the life and the speed that you want your uh, design to achieve. Here we have a, an equivalent force and design factor. The design factor is obviously given by the designer. An equivalent force. Here in this slide we can see the equivalent force formula which is a 
calculated based on which kind of loads are applied to the design. In this case, and to the design can be applied radial loads and actual loads. In the case of radial loads, only it's going to be always the same equivalent force as the radial loads. But if there are a combination of radial and actual loads uh, on the design, we we'll always have to calculate this equivalent force uh, based on parameters given by tables. Here in these tables, we can see the different parameters that we can use in order to calculate the equivalent force. In this case, for example, we can come to the table and assume a value for uh, the factor C0 to select a ratio and in order to go and select the different parameters. By doing this, assuming factors and values, we're going to have to develop a, an iterative procedure, an iterative uh, calculation in order to get to and a specific value needed for the equivalent force. You can see an example of a table that gives us the value of the low ratings uh, according to the parameters uh, the, given by the bearings. Next, we can see a table that gives us values for the different x and y values. Let's talk about maintenance now. Uh, bearings might seem to be very difficult and complex elements to design, but they're actually very easy to maintain. The maintenance of bearings can be done either with grease or oil. Their function is to provide a film of lubricant between the sliding and rolling surfaces. It helps to dissipate the heat. It also prevents corro corrosion of the bearing surfaces. It protects the parts from the entrance of foreign matters. Another way to protect the bearings is also using seals. There are three principal types of seals in the market, and there are the felt seal, the commercial seal, and the labyrinth. Assembly and disassembly. Ball bearings are precision components which should be handled very carefully when mounted. That is why it is important to choose the proper method of mounting and to use the proper tools as well. SKF provides several maintenance products, includes mechanical and hydraulic tools and hidden equipment as well as other products for mounting and maintenance. Let's talk about the preliminary steps for selecting the bearings. Now we want to find out the bearing life using the SKF um, software. According to SKF, the first step to find out the life is to select a contamination factor, which ranges from 0 to 1. Second, we pre-select a bearing. In this case, we're going to use a deep groove single row. Now, we want to find, according to our design, we need a bearing which has a, a diameter of 72 millimeters. So we look in the catalog until we find 72, which here we select it, we just click on this line, and the boxes are automatically filled. So we have an inside diameter of 50 millimeters and an outside diameter of 72 with a rating load of 14.6. The third step is to plug the equivalent force uh, already calculated uh, before this, which is 1.75. And we plug also the speed. In this case, it's uh, 1725 revolutions per minute. And let's uh, discuss it. We just click on here, calculate, and SKF tells us that our bearing is going to withstand uh, 5,610 hours of operation. Also, SKF uh, gives us an advice, which is uh, since our viscosity ratio is less than 1, we should be using additives to our lubricant, which, whichever lubricant you guys choose. To conclude, this procedure allows the selection of the most suitable type of bearing that meets the requirements of a specific design. The design parameters to take into account are the loads, design dimensions, rotation speed, arrangements of other components for assembly and disassemble purposes. SKF provides all of the tools to select the proper bearing for the specific design. 
Most of the calculations are taken care of before any input is plugged into the software. SKF has catalogs that mention all of the parameters for each different type of bearing manufactured by them. Once the whole selection process has been developed and the device has been completely assembled, the manufacturer recommends, as for any other mechanical device, to keep it lubricated and to provide the necessary maintenance. With this, we have concluded our presentation. I hope you guys like it. Thank you.